All right, for A1, we have the graph of the function f from negative two to two. And we need to figure out which graph could be the antiderivative of f. So one, the way to think about this is um, which of these graphs would make sense so that its derivative would be this. So let's just think of these, think of these as like another graph g and then think of this as g prime. So um, yeah. So let's analyze what's going on here. So the key is to analyze is to under recognize um, where the graph is positive and when it's negative. So from the from so let's just call that negative one point five. So the left of negative one point five, the function is negative. In this region, the, the function is positive. And then after one point five, the graph is negative again, down here. And so what does that say about the function? G that then basically says that the graph of G is decreasing up to here, increasing all along this area, and decreasing after that. It doesn't matter that it goes up and down in here. This is basically just saying that the rate of increase is changing, but it's still increasing all along this interval. So let's see which one would make sense. So let's break our you know portions in negative one and a half to and one and a half. And A would not be the graph because right away from the left, the graph is increasing and this is decreasing. So it's not gonna be A that goes against that. Looking at B. Again, B, um, the graph is increasing. You can see up from negative two up to here, but the graph should be decreasing at the start. So it's not gonna be B. All right, C. Okay, so C is possible. The graph is decreasing here, okay. And then it's decreasing after as well. But in here it increases, then it decreases, then it increases. So it's close, but it has to always be increasing in here. It can't increase, then decrease, and increase. Remember, don't let this throw you off again. This is just, I'm um, saying that the rate of increase is, you know, slowing down and going up. Still increasing the whole time though. And then just by process elimination, it would be D, but let's just check it out and see how it makes sense. Yeah, see from the left, it's decreasing here. It's always increasing in there and it's decreasing after 1.5. And so our answer is indeed D. All right, 82. All right, particle travels along a straight line with velocity V of t equals three e to the negative t over two times the sine of two t meters per second. What is the total distance in meters traveled by the, traveled by the particle during the time interval, zero to two seconds? Okay, so what we have to keep in mind is that distance um, is always gonna be positive. So we have to um, be aware that if this function becomes negative at any point, um, that's gonna basically counter, counter the um, distance being traveled if we were integrated. Because generally, we could to find displacement, we could just integrate velocity, the velocity function over an interval. We, we wouldn't have to care about the sign. But um, to find distance, we have to always make sure that the absolute you have to always make sure that that this stays positive so, you, so we would we would take the absolute value of this quantity so we have to figure out if there are any zeros and or and or if v of t ever becomes a negative in this interval so let's go ahead and let's graph and let's look at the graph of this function all right so we got three e to negative x divided by two times the sine of two x. Oh wow! So you can see there's some cool, crazy stuff. Let's say so it looks like it's gonna have some zeros there. Let me draw a sketch of it.
So let's find where that zero, where these zeros are. We can just analyze it. So you have one zero of 1.57. And let's check to make sure the other zero doesn't get before three. Or I mean before two, that's what I mean. I think it actually is three, but let's double check. Three point one four should look like. Okay, so we're fine. So maybe two will be somewhere in there. In either case, you see how the integral here is positive and here it's negative. So what we're gonna do is break this integral up at one point five seven. So we're gonna go from zero to one point five seven v of t dt, and then we're gonna add that the absolute value of the integral from 1.57 to 2 v of t dt. Since this is going to be negative, it's the same as minusing this. You could like in my calculator, I'm going to do it. But um, but um, so it'd be the same as minusing. Let me just well, minus, let me just a plus here. But in my calculator, I'm going to do minus this integral because it's going to be a negative quantity, just so it's easier to compute. And see what we get. All right, so when you go to calculus, whoa, whoa, zero, two, Mm -hmm. Definitely got to make sure you know how to use these calculators. Times a times a factor on your test. Sine of two x. Hopefully, I didn't make a typo or anything. Let me just double check. I do x over two dx. Right, here we go. Two point two six. And that is that should be right. Two point two six one three ish. And yeah, answer our answer will be D. Yeah, that was a long one. Not a problem. All right, eighty three. Let f be a function with derivative given by this cool equation. F prime of x equals this for x between negative one and nine. What value of x does f attain a relative maximum? Okay, so we want to graph this. Let me just first graph this so then I can tell you what, what to do. Because we basically want to graph that and see analyze the behavior. See where the function goes from positive to negative values. Square root of x cubed plus three. Oh, I said square root of x cubed plus one. What I meant. Right, let's make sure I didn't make any mistakes. I always freak out about this. All right, looks all good. Okay, so this is the derivative. Keep that in mind. So maximum occurs 
when the derivative changes from increasing to decreasing or when it changes from positive to negative because when it's positive so like this is so a maximum if this is a max before the maximum f prime is positive f prime is greater than zero it's kind of messy but f prime is greater than zero after the maximum f prime becomes negative x pr f prime becomes less than zero so here we we want to see where it's positive and where it's negative so where it goes from being positive to negative we don't care again we don't don't get fooled by the shape look at just the value so the graph is you know negative here then positive so it's positive up to here and then it goes to being negative at that point so let's see what that intersection is whoa my calculator Look at that zero there. And about 0 0.68, point, no, 0 0.638. And yeah, so our answer will be C. Nice. Right, 84. Right, the number of bacteria in a container increase at a rate, increases at a rate of R of T bacteria per hour. If there are a thousand bacteria at time T equals zero, which is following expressions, gives the number of bacteria in the container at time T equals three hours. Okay, so um, remember to get the total amount of something when you're given the rate, you integrate it. So we wanna find the total amount of bacteria. We're given the rate of the growth of bacteria. If we want to figure out how much there are times three, we would integrate this from zero to three. Because this will tell me how much accumulated from time zero to three, but there are already a thousand to start. So we want to add a thousand to this. So a thousand plus this integral will give me the total amount at three seconds. And so that'll be, oh yeah, it's not even a number. I was thinking it was going to be a number. It's going to be D. All right. 85, the function f is continuous on the closed interval one to four with g of one equals five and g of four equals eight. With the following conditions, which would guarantee that there is a number c in the open interval one, four, where g prime of c equals one. g prime of c is equal to one. Okay, so continuous on the closed interval with g of one equal to five and g of four equal to eight. Let's just draw a visual picture so you can better understand this or, e and, or easier, understand this easier. So G of one is five. Let's say we have a point here, one, five. And G of four is eight. So let's say that's four, eight. So we're talking about the open interval here. So one to four, where G prime of C equals one. G prime of C equals one. So it's, so we're so already told it's continuous. So it's, you know, we already know it's gonna, we already know they're gonna connect somehow. We don't know exactly what the shape is, but we know it's gonna connect. There's gonna be no gaps, no jumps. And then to find a number C where G prime of C would be one simply means that the um, slope of a tangent line would have to be one. So um, it's kind of, let's, this is the mean value theorem. So what um, kind of takes care of itself. If you were to connect, essentially, if you were to connect these two, these two points, with a you know straight line, what's the slope of this line? The slope of this line is simply eight minus five over four minus one, or three over three, or just one. The slope of that line is one. So, so essentially, it's just saying that there's going to be some point, some tangent line 
where basically we want to find a, a tangent line to the graph of G so that it would basically be horizontal or parallel to this so that the tangent line would be, would be you know, you know, having the same slope. So like it's, it's pretty logical. It's pretty cool. This works. I can make this graph. I can make this look any like anything. I can make it do like this, whatever. But at some point you'll have a tangent line, at least one, where the slope is going to be one. And for the only other condition it needs to be met is that this has to be differentiable. It has to be a smooth curve. Um, it just wouldn't work if you had like a sharp point like that. Like if it was something like that, see, then then that wouldn't be differentiable, even though it's continuous. It just has to be differentiable. And that's that's what the mean value theorem conditions say. And so the answer will be B. All right, so I hope that helps. Good luck with those.